Hi, I'm Craig from Claude and Gospel Hall. I'm here just to share a short message uh, from uh, the Bible with you this afternoon. And the title that the talk is given today is The Great Reset. Um, we're on the threshold of a new year, and for many it can't come quick enough. And perhaps on January the 1st, you will be celebrating the end of 2020 as much as celebrating uh, the wel and welcoming 2021. But if I had asked you on January the 1st, 2020, what your predictions would be for the year ahead, I'm sure no one could have predicted what was going to happen. Uh, a new beginning offers fresh hope though, doesn't it? A hope of something better, turning away from the past and looking to the future. The World, World Economic Forum recently put out a video uh, entitled Eight Predictions for the World in 2030 as part of their Great Reset initiative. This, uh, th this first prediction that they make uh, is surprising, and it's this, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. I don't know about you, but it made me laugh when I first heard it. It sounds ridiculous on both counts though, doesn't it? Take the first point though, you'll own nothing. Think about how many things are turning into subscription services, uh, how many things that you pay off over years, your mortgage, your car finance, um, furniture, mobile phones, things like that. As for the second statement, uh, we'll maybe touch on that later. Uh, but this prediction actually refers to a, a blog post that was written in November 2016 uh, by Ida Oken, I hope I pronounced her name right, who's an MP of Denmark. In her own words, she says about the post, some people have read this blog as my utopia uh, or dream of the future. It's not. It's a scenario showing where we could be heading for better and for worse. I wrote this piece to start a discussion uh, about some of the pros and cons of the current technological development. She begins, Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city. Or should I say our city? I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or clothes. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense to me, or it makes perfect sense to uh, for us in this city. Everything considered, uh, everything you considered a product has now become a service. Um, we have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all the things that we need to uh, in our daily li uh, daily lives. One by one, all these things became free, so it ended up not making sense for us to own much. First communi uh, communication became digitized and free to everyone. Then when clean energy became free, things started to move quickly. She then talks a bit about environmental problems that seem far away. She talks a bit about the death of shopping. Sorry all you shopaholics out there. And then uh, she refers to the, uh, those who do not live in our city, which she later refers to as those we lost along the way. Finally, she concludes with the following. Uh, Once in a while, I get annoyed about the fact that I have no real privacy. Know where I can go and get registered. And note what she says now. I know that somewhere, everything I do, think and dream of is recorded. I just hope that no one, no one, nobody will use it against me. All in all, it's a good life, much better than the path we were on where it became so clear that we could not continue with the same model of growth. We had all these terrible things happening, lifestyle, diseases, climate change, the refugee crisis, environmental degradation, completely congested cities, water pollution, air pollution, social unrest and unemployment. We lost too many people before we realised that we could do things differently. Now, it's not my intention to make any political uh, comment or stir up conspiracy. I'm just quoting what is openly out there for all to see. But I do want to make one important observation um, about what she said. Did you notice that in all that she said, there was one thing that she didn't like about this scenario? It's very telling. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll quote it again just in case uh, you missed it. She says, I know that somewhere everything I do, think and dream of is recorded. I just hope that no one will use it against me. 
Did you know that the first part of the statement is true right now? And not only right now, but it has always been the case. Did you know that everything you do, think and dream of is uh, known and recorded? And it's not the government I'm talking about. The Bible makes it clear that God knows everything you do, everything you think, everything that you dream about. And some listening might be familiar with the Bible story, often referred to as Noah's Ark. That was the first real great reset. And it's not just a fictitious story for children. This is a real story that really happened. This planet is full of the evidence of a global flood in the past. And many well-regarded geologists would back this up. It's even possible that the remains of the real Noah's Ark, the large ship, of course, that kept Noah, his family and the animals safe, has been found. Did you know that you could go to Turkey today and on the slopes of the mountains of Ararat, there's something that suspiciously looks like a shipwreck. It's in the right location. It has the dimensions the Bible describes uh, and radiocarbon dating uh, of the samples taken there uh, place it at approximately 4,800 years old when roughly the, the flood would have occurred. And if you don't believe me, look into these things for yourself. But the, the Bible account, uh, the biblical account of, of Noah, the ark and the flood are recorded in Genesis chapter 6 through to 9 in the Bible. Uh, Genesis 6 verse 5 and 6 says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. <clears throat> Just as God looked down from heaven in those days and saw the thoughts of mankind, so he does today. Did you know that God knows everything about you, everything about me? Did you know that he sees what's in your mind? He knows what you're thinking right now not only does god know everything about us but he keeps a record of everything we do revelation chapter 20 verse 11 and 12 says this then i saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great standing before god and books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books what was the one fear that Ida uh, mentioned in her blog post it was this I just hope that nobody will use it against me why would anyone be scared of someone knowing everything about them think about it why would you not like someone else to know everything about you Perhaps it's because we're not as good as we like to think we are. Perhaps you might say, we cannot even trust others 100%. Why is that? Does that mean that others are flawed just like us? Is this not an accurate reflection of what the Bible tells us? Well, Romans 3 verse 23 says this, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. <clears throat> Sin literally means to miss the mark. Imagine an archer trying to hit the bullseye, but the arrow falls short or goes astray. When we sin, we fail to hit the target. What is the target? The glory or the praise of God. We all fail to meet his perfect standard. God is speaking. In Psalm 14, verse 3, he says, There is none who does good, not even one. God has given mankind his moral law which you might know as the Ten Commandments. Uh, and this is the bullseye, as it were, the target, the standard which we come short of. Let's take the last two, for example. Have you ever told lies, no matter how small? Or the, the last one. Have you ever coveted, desired, or lusted after something or someone that is not yours? Then think about how many times you've done those things in the last week then the past year, then your entire life. I'm sure that you would lose track pretty quickly. I know I would. And that is just two of the commands. There's ten. The problem with sin is that sin comes with consequences. 
the holy, the righteous, the, the good God, who is the judge of all the earth, he cannot just sweep our sin under the carpet, as it were. Sin has to be dealt with, it has to be punished. Romans 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The punishment that we deserve, our wages if you will, is death. Everyone dies because we have all sinned. But those who do not accept the gift of God will be partakers of what the Bible talks about as the second death, and that is also called the lake of fire. And those who don't, don't want God or his son in this life, God will fix that decision once you die. In the lake of fire, it is an existence separate from God, where there'll be no love, no light, no peace, no joy, but instead there'll be pain, suffering and torment. Is that a place that you would like to spend eternity in? I don't think so. So is there any really, any real true hope for us? We're coming to the, the end of what has perhaps been one of the bleakest, blackest years for many so far. Everyone has been affected in some way or another. Perhaps one or some of these things have happened to you. You've lost love, a loved one or loved ones. Or you've been separated from loved ones. Or you've lost your livelihood. Or you've lost a partner or spouse because things have got so stressful. Or you've lost your health. Or you've lost your hope. It was just over a week ago since it was reported locally that someone had died following an incident on the Keswick Bridge, which, uh, with with a person having been re recovered uh, from the water, and they died shortly after. Suicides on the increase, and for some, perhaps they feel there's no hope. On the other hand, with the arrival of a new year comes the arrival of hope for many. And with a vaccine beginning to be rolled out, people are hoping that there will be a return to normality. Hope is what keeps us going. But what about the ultimate enemy in life? I'm talking about death. As mentioned previously, we're all guilty. We all have fallen short. We all deserve eternity without God. So can we have real hope after death? Can we be saved from eternal death? God says yes, but it's on one condition, faith. You cannot earn salvation. The Ten Commandments prove that we've broken them as we've already seen. And that was just two we looked at. The Apostle Paul writing to Christians at Ephesus uh, in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, he says, By grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Just to be clear, faith means to believe, to trust, to put your confidence in someone or something. Many people think that Christianity is about wishful thinking. Far from it, our faith is based on evidence. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the Proving or the evidence of things not seen. The evidence is there if you look for it. Hebrews 11 verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Noah believed in God. He had a reverence for God and he acted upon God's word. Noah knew that judgment was coming. Judgment is coming for us. The, the, the Bible says he has appointed it a day, a day in which he will judge the world. But was Noah going to be like everyone else and say, well, there's no God, therefore there's no judgment coming? No, he believed what God had said and he was saved. And he, and he was he was only saved by God's grace, and that's God's unmerited favour. The gospel, the good news of the Bible, is as simple as A, B, C. A. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. 
if you want to be saved, the first thing that you have to do is acknowledge God first yeah. and that you are a sinner in his sight. As we've already seen, Romans 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you want to do what pleases God, you have to turn away, that is repent uh, from your sins. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, Acts 3 verse 19 says. Remember the books that God keeps that we mentioned before when he judges the world. All your sins can be blotted out of that book. There will be no record or remembrance of your sins. The psalmist writing in Psalm 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. If you want a taste of what God is like, I highly recommend reading all of Psalm 103. B. Believe Jesus Christ is Lord. The next thing that you have to do is believe in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and the mouth, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That's Romans 10 verse 9 and 10. Christmas has just passed, which is when we think about the birth of the Lord Jesus. But who is he and why did he come? Well, in Matthew 1, there's an angel that appears to Joseph and he says concerning Mary, She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The angel that spoke to Joseph and Mary instructed them to call his name Jesus. Also mentioned is a prophecy that was written about 750 years prior to this of the virgin birth and the name that would be given, Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Saviour, but he is God with us, the Son of God, the God, uh, the Son of God who came down from heaven to earth. Why did he come? The angel tells us. He will save his people from their sins. That's what Jesus means, Jehovah the Saviour. So he came to be the Saviour. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost, the Bible says. How can he save us? Hebrews 2 verse 14 and 15. Since therefore the children are share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. You could say the Lord Jesus used the devil's own weapon, that is death, against him in order to destroy him and deliver us. Sin enslaves us, Christ can set us free. The devil wants us to remain enslaved to sin, but God loves us. Remember, Romans 5 verse 8 says, God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But not only did Christ die, he rose again. And because he lives, we can have eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 5 says this, I delivered, this is Paul speaking, I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, also known as Peter, then to the twelve, and many more. He goes on to talk about over 500 at once. Praise God that the gospel doesn't even end there. The Bible also tells us that the Lord Jesus is coming back very soon to take all those who are his to be with him. And the Lord Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He said to them in John 14, verse 2, uh, 2 to 3, In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, 
Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to be, take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? The last one, C, call upon his name. Romans 10 verse 13 says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no ifs or buts or maybes. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Once you're saved, you can never be lost. You are safe for eternity, forever. And with this I'll close. None of us know with a certainty what's going to happen in the year ahead. Not even tomorrow. There are many who have died perhaps thinking that they had years ahead of them still. What are you hoping in? Is your hope for this life only? Praise God, all of us who are the Lord's are waiting for him to come back to take us to be with him. It could happen before the end of today. What about you? Are you ready? If you trust the Lord to be your saviour, you can have a great reset of your own. Not that we no longer sin in this life, no Christian is perfect. But the Bible tells us that all who trust in the Lord will become a new creation, a new creature in Christ. You have a new life, eternal life. You will receive a new body one day, God willing. Uh, and we will begin on the journey to be with the Lord, with our Lord, and be like our Lord. What about you? Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we give thanks again for the gospel. We give thanks for the wondrous message of the gospel that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And we think of Paul who could say, of whom I am chief. And our God, we, we look at ourselves and we look at how far short we fall. And we pray if there's any listening today that they would acknowledge their, their sin before you, a holy and righteous God, that they would trust in the Lord Jesus, believe in him, to be their saviour and to be their Lord. And we pray that they would call upon you, call upon the Lord, and that they would have assurance that their sins are forgiven, that their home is in heaven, that their sins have been blotted out of that book, and that their names are written in the book of life. And our God, we just pray for your blessing upon your word, uh, and we give thanks again for the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we ask. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless.